Right, OK, so the Royal College of Nursing had given Steve Barclay until midnight tonight to enter talks before any more strike action is announced. Some would say that's a little bit bully boy tactics, but there we go. But it looks like the government have other ideas. Nurses have not been the only ones striking, though. We've had rail workers, postal workers, talks of teachers striking... Driving examiners went on strike, although did anyone notice is the real question. It's almost easier to ask who isn't striking. But it does beg the question, are we just afraid of a bit of hard graft in this country now? Joining me to discuss this is Lord Karan Bilimoria and founder of the Cobra Beer. Oh, he is founder of the Cobra Beer, there you go. And also vice president of the CBI and political commentator and former Lib Dem spin doctor, which sounds very sinister. It's Joe Phillips, thank you very much. Joe, I'll start with you. When you look at everything in the round and you see how many different people from how many different sectors are on strike, it leads me to wonder whether or not we're a bit lazy. Um, I think if you said that to a paramedic or a nurse uh, or a teacher, you would probably be close to getting a slap round the face. And frankly, P Patrick, I'd say deservedly so. I can't think of anybody who works harder than anybody in the health uh, industry. Um, and these are people on the front line. And part of the problem is, as we know, the mm. complete lack of staffing, the number of vacancies, the number of people leaving, which means that those who are left, and they really are on the front line, are working longer shifts, extra shifts. They're having to take on more duties, deal with more patients. Can you squeeze mm. another one in? Ambulance crews can't get the pa patients off their ambulances and into hospital. The, mm. the National Health Service is in crisis, and that's a much longer and, and different yeah. discussion. Uh, but the well, idea yeah. that people are no, the idea that people are not working hard of these people that are on strike is absolutely nonsense. OK, all right, fair enough. You said that I might get a slap in the face for saying that. I tell you what, really desperately ill patients are getting a slap in the face, though, Joe, aren't they, in Scotland, after nurses there turned down an 11.3% pay rise and an average pay increase of 7.5%. But it's not just nurses that I'm talking about, Joe, as you well know. I'm going to lob it over now to uh, Karen. Lord Karen, do you think that there is a little bit of a crisis in this country with people across the board not necessarily putting their shoulders to the wheel? People have suffered so much now for coming on to three years. We've had a pandemic for two years, then the sad war in Ukraine. There's just one challenge after another for businesses, for consumers, and for people working. It's been really, really tough. And, and we've got the situation of stagflation. It's, stagflation is one of the worst things to deal with as an economy when you have no growth or a recession. We may even be in a recession and you have really high inflation. Dealing with each one of those is a challenge. Dealing with both of them is mm. really difficult. And if you have a wage spiral inflation where wages keep going up, then it just fuels inflation more. So there's got to be a balance. And when it comes to nurses, I've always said well below this years ago that nurses are one of the most underpaid professions in our country. They mm. work so hard. They do such amazing work. They get paid nowhere near as enough as they deserve to be paid. So that's the starting point. I always have felt nurses need to get paid more mm. at any time. Now, whether okay. you go for inflation, <laughs> increasing pay well, rises... This, this is the question, isn't it? This is, this is the exact is, question. Is yeah, it's all, I think they should be, think they should be paid more, but, but where we are at the minute is that people are going on strike and demanding, like a toddler, things that are way out of anyone's reach. And that, that is an <laughs> issue, Jeff. <laughs> But Patrick, but it's nothing to do with uh, no, Joe, sorry, Joe, go to Joe. Has Joe. gone up by sixteen and a half percent. What has? Year. So that's bread and cereals, you know, For staple everyone. foods, cheap foods. Um, we know that we announced today that rail fares are going up to nearly by nearly which is remarkable, actually, isn't it? When you think about the service and how fewer people are using it than before, and the fact that they still want a pay rise, including train drivers who are already on about an average of sixty odd grand a year, it's remarkable that the price is going up just to get on a train, isn't it, Joe? Well, it is remarkable, but people, you know, if you're a nurse or you're, let's say you're a care worker, for instance, I mean, they are not striking. Them. Ten pounds an hour, average ten pounds. You know, you work mm. a forty-hour week. Well, you can do the maths. If out of what you get, sixteen hundred pounds a week, you're mm. paying probably nine hundred um, in rent, let's say, then mm. you've got council tax and electricity and gas bills and anything else. If you're having to run a car in order to get to 
um, your clients in their own homes for which you get paid 25 pence a mile. You can't keep trimming the fat. And the, the caller, um, or the, the Jackie, I think it was, who said mm. she budgets. Well, you can only budget so far, but when there is nothing left to cut, people can't manage. Mm. OK, I'll throw it back over to you, Karen. I think more gener generally, I'm worried about the state of the younger generation. I think people spend a lot of time on Instagram and TikTok. I think people have perfect lives. And actually, I can't help but feel as though we have a society at the moment where people work to their wage and not beyond it. And if you want to get on in life, you've got to try and work a little bit harder, haven't you? Well, I don't think that this is an argument or debate about people working hard enough. I, the people I work with, whether it's in Cobra Beer, the people I work with at the CBI, the people I work with in Parliament, in the households, so they work really, really hard. I don't think this is about that. I think this is about people genuinely struggling. During the pandemic, the government spent £400 billion saving jobs, saving the economy, saving businesses. Now, that help is no longer there. There's a little bit of help for businesses with energy prices. There's help for consumers with energy. But mm. it goes way beyond that because the war in Ukraine has not only fueled inflation and energy. The knock-on effect of that, as you've just heard from Joe, is food prices go up. Cost of living goes up. People are struggling. Businesses in the hospitality industry, they mm. got VAT relief, if you remember, during the pandemic. There's no longer that help. Okay. There's just rates relief that's needed. So businesses do need help. And I, as they I do. keep saying, the pandemic may be over, but the crisis is not over. We're in a no. terrible crisis at the moment. W and well, the we are. And businesses need to work together. Yeah, uh, look, absolutely. And Joe, I mean, it's a real shame that some people from some political parties as well were banging in favour of harder lockdowns. Other people were saying, this is going to cost us in the long run. People are going to have to pay through the nose for this future generations. And still, a load of people from a load of political parties were banging the drum to shackle us and, and, and chain us to Chris Whitty's radiator. And therefore, we were all now in economic peril. Joe, you painted a picture there about a wider picture of people who are struggling. Is it not the nurse's duty to accept a reasonable pay offer and not be so selfish? So that other people can get is a pay offer as well. Is it? Isn't it? Isn't it the government's duty? Ah, well, ah, good. I'm give, glad you said that. No, Joe, Joe, I'm glad you've said that actually, because actually, in real terms, since 2010, the NHS has had a 39 percent funding increase. So should people not be protesting that's going against into the, the NHS? Management? That's con no, but Patrick, that's money going into the NHS. But that it could is be better spent. Yeah, but Joe, it, but pay. they're, but they're striking it over pay. How many Joe, hospitals? I mean, you, you know, remember Joe, Boris you Johnson know they're stri no, I know, I know. To build 40 new hospitals. Joe, well, unless you've got the I know you used to work as a spin them. doctor, right? And, and, it's, and it's shining through because at the start of this conversation, it wasn't just about pay, was it? It was about conditions as well. And that was supposedly mm -hmm. equally as important. But now yeah. you managed to turn it all about pay. The money that was pumped into the NHS, the 39% real terms pay increase in 2010, could be used to help improve conditions and therefore help retention as well, couldn't it? And that's not the absolutely. government's fault, no. Joe. Absolutely. No, and absolutely. And, and part of the problem, as I said, is that the NHS is in crisis. And actually, the mm. Shadow Health Secretary Wes Streeting said a couple of weeks ago, we need to have a proper conversation. And one of the conversations which has been taking place over the last 20 years to no conclusion is how you deal with social care, because that's part of the problem with people not being able to get beds in hospitals. But it's also, I mean, as Lord Billamoria said, you know, the government did step in and help a lot of businesses, business yeah. that had to close. But the nurses, the post okay. office, uh, office workers, the shop workers, the drivers, the bin collectors, and those mm. people carried on working. So we yeah. can't expect those people to pay their bills and feed their kids by somebody standing outside banging a saucepan with a wooden spoon on a Thursday. No, no uh, absolutely not. And I'll give the final word very quickly, though, to uh, Lord Billamoria. I am aware, of course, you're the founder of Cobra Beer, vice president of the CBI. If you had staff that came to you now, it's not in the public sector, it came to you and said, I need a pay rise in line with inflation, otherwise we all walk out, would you give it to them? Well, my staff would never, would never behave like that. I, I really try and treat uh, it as one big family and, and would never come to that. But let me just say this. The NHS, we as a country, as a proportion of GDP, the amount that we spend on the NHS, there are other countries that spend an equivalent amount on GDP and have a far better outcome than better we do. Service. The NHS, exactly. even where streeting, the Shadow Health Secretary, who I think is a really capable individual, has said it needs reform. We need yeah. to look at this very, very seriously.
Absolutely. Both of you, thank you very much. I enjoyed that. That's Lord Blamoria, the founder of Cobra Beer, also vice president of the CBI and political commentator and former Lib Dem spin doctor Joe Phillips. Right, get your views coming in, ladies and gents. GBviews at gbnews.uk.